hell, why would you create this criminal creature, put him in an environment where you work out his worst criminal incl inclinations, having this false feeling of independence from God, when you could just make them angels and pop them into heaven? A lot of content in that verse. Well, I had to know how he answered the question. You know, I didn't believe in God. I wasn't hoping to ever believe in God. I just was curious. I thought the author had committed theological suicide by bringing up that question <laughs> at the beginning of the story of humanity. You know, ask it at the end, at least. <laughs> Not at the beginning. You're going to lose most of your audience right there. <laughs> but I had to see what he had to say. So I came to the next verse, and it reads, And he taught Adam the names of all things. And then he placed them before the angels and said, tell me their names if you are right. Now, you know, I've read the story of Adam many times. It's a beautiful, beautiful biblical story, by the way. Powerful, passionate, you know, really a lot of angst in that story. I thought, did the author get it wrong? I mean, did he just not understand the story? I mean, because you know why we're here from a biblical perspective. I mean, you know, it's life is punishment for that many sins. But, you know, he seems to have it wrong, you know? He's saying, I'm about to put this Weister in on her. I, told him, I thought, you know, no, no, we're not put here to fill some positive function, to be elected to some lofty role. We're put here as a punishment. But that's not what the verse says. The angels ask the obvious question, and now the Quran, and presumably God, from the perspective of the Quran, starting to explain things. And then he taught Adam the names of all things. So in answer to the angel's question, first the Quran is emphasizing that God teaches man, and man is a learning creature. And then he taught Adam the names of things, and then he placed them before the angels and said, tell me their names if you are right. Now, I, when you read a text like this, you kind of, you know, I was always taught to learn how to, how to read poetry and, you know, classical works. So you've got to kind of read between the lines. But what is it saying? You know, God, it emphasizes that God teaches man how to name things. In particular, what special intellectual gift is God teaching him? How to communicate verbally with others? How to assign verbal symbols to all that comes into human imagination? And the Quran says this is one of the great gifts that God gave. One of the preeminent gifts that God gave man over the other beings. His great ability to communicate. Later in the Quran, it'll say, read in the name of your Lord who created man out of a tiny creature that claims. And then it orders the reader again, read, for your Lord is the most powerful, for he gave man the use of the pen and taught him with it. He taught man the use of the pen, taught him what he could not know. Emphasizing the collective way we all learn, especially through the use of the pen. Quran says that this ability to communicate and to communicate verbally and to communicate via writing is one of the great, great gifts that God gives to humankind. And the very next verse after that one I just said, but truly man is ungrateful because he views himself as independent of God. He starts to think that he's so great intellectually that he even starts to think he doesn't need God. He starts to challenge the existence of God. Very powerful verse. But in any case, Quran puts great emphasis on the human intellect. But here it seems to be, seems to be emphasizing it in response to the angel's question. Because not only does he teach man, but then he gives the angels an intellectual test. He places the things, some things before the angels and says to me, now name them if what you said about the humans, the humans is right. That it doesn't make sense to create. And what did the angels say? They said, glory be to you, O God. We have no knowledge except what you taught us. We don't have the understanding, the intellect, the knowledge to perform this task. It's way beyond them. They say, in truth, it is you who are knowing the wise. You have the knowledge, the wisdom. It's easy for you. You are God. You're infinitely knowing, wise. But we're only angels. This is way beyond them. See, it's emphasizing intelligence, intellect. Now, what did the next verse say? And then it says, and then he said, God said, Oh, Adam, tell them their names. And then the very next verse says, and then when he had told them their names, nothing for the human. 
And the style, it jumps right to that statement as if it's a hop, skip, and a part for Adam. Oh, Adam, tell them their names. And when he had told them their names, it's nothing for them. Nothing for the men. And when he had told them their names, God said to the angels, Did I not tell you that I know what is unseen in the heavens and the earth? Did I not tell you that I see the big picture, that I know exactly what I'm doing? The angels fail where the human excels easily. And that I know what you reveal and what you conceal. And I stopped for a second. I said, wait. Okay, you've emphasized human intellect here. Show the angels that men are potentially, intellectually superior to angels. Okay, I got that. This line about revealing and concealing. You didn't say anything about revealing and concealing. Did I not tell you? what you reveal and conceal, and this is the method of the Quran. It asks questions, where the answer is you have to sort of reach inside yourself and think and deliberate and ponder. It forces you to read between the lines. I'm looking at that and I said, what did God reveal and conceal? What did the angels question reveal and conceal? Scott said, did I not tell you what you reveal and conceal? So I think about it for a second and I think, well, what they revealed was obvious. Humans, humanity's sinister propensity. Man's criminal nature. Human destructiveness and violence. Are you following? But what did they conceal? I didn't see them conceal anything. It didn't mention what they conceal. And then, of course, I realized it's obvious. The flip side of the coin. Yes, humans could do great violence. Yes, they could do terrible destruction. Yes, they could do tremendous evil. But they could also do tremendous good. But the angels, like I, was always blinded to that side of human nature. The angels in their question, and I myself, was always blinded to that side of human nature. I always just saw the dark side. It was too moved too big in my mind. Blinded me to the other side, yeah. Human beings could do tremendous good. They could rise to the heights of compassion and empathy and goodness and self-sacrifice. And sometimes the arrival of one type provokes the arrival of the other type on the human stage. So you get Adolf Hitler and Franklin Roosevelt, right? Forces of Franklin Roosevelt to rise to his, his evil. You know, or you get the same, that sort of thing, the very evil, very good, arriving on the same stage of the same country at the same moment in history. You know, we're in the same city, or same city block. Maybe, I thought, even the same house. But in any case, what the Quran was doing was forcing me to think. It was opening my eyes to other possibilities. But it was involving me in this perpetual dialogue. Very often I get really mad at the author, whom I assumed was a man, of course. And then the next line says, uh, and behold, he said to the angels, and I won't take you through the entire Quran, by the way. <laughs> Unless we're going to be here until, I don't know, next September. <laughs> I'd like to, but you know, we'll all die of starvation. <laughs> and then they, so the next line says, I'll just take you through a few more lines, and then try to rush things along after that. And we said, and by the way, if you want to find it in greater detail, it's a chapter about 100 page long in my book, uh, Losing Our Religion, A Call for Help. You know, I write about this at some length. So I'm just going to, you know, sort of uh, uh, summarize it. And we said, in the next line it says, and we said, oh, Adam. No, in the next line it says, after a, a behold, Adam tell her the names, et cetera. And the next line says, and behold, we said to the angels, after the humans succeed, the humans succeed, but the angels fail. And behold, we said to the angels, now bow down to Adam. <coughs> and they bowed down. Not so Iblis. It says he refused and was arrogant. He was of those who reject faith. 